wasn't that long ago, we were all wondering when are Toyotas finally going to arrive in the collector car world? Well, I can tell you one thing, that day is finally here. Hi there, I'm Rick DeBrule. Welcome to our Barrett-Jackson Top 10 Series. In this case, we're looking at the Barrett-Jackson Collector Car Auction from Las Vegas and the Top 10 Toyota sales of the auction. And just like with other makers, it ranges from off-road to full-on performance. So let's get straight to it and talk about that top 10. Coming in at number 10 was a bit of a surprise, actually. It was a 2010 Toyota FJ Cruiser. And this thing set a new record, selling, once again, the number 10 Toyota sale of the auction for $36,300. Lot number 130, 2010 Toyota FJ Are Cruiser. You, Title in transit. Title in transit. The vehicle was not in the printed pocket guide. Carfax shows Toyota Motor Sales USA Incorporated. Manufacturer safety recall issued March 4, 2011, October 17, 2012, March 15, 2013, April 25th, 2013. Damage report May 29, 2013. Accident reported June 24, 2015. Damage reported minor damage to the right front and front. 67,000 actual miles. No, sir. No, sir. I took Chris at three. You've got to be four, sir. Whitey, what you want to do? I took Chris at three. You got to be four. Yes, sir. I'm four. From a modern FJ, we're going to go back into the 80s. Not quite a Marty McFly pickup truck, but those SR5s from the mid-80s are definitely coming on in value. And the number nine sale for Toyotas of the Las Vegas auction, well, check this out. It's a 1983 Toyota SR5 pickup truck. Final price for this guy right here, $37,400. 1983 Toyota SR5 pickup. Here comes a truck that spent most of its life in Texas, then went to Alaska, spent 11 years there in a heated garage, got a 2.4 liter four-cylinder engine, a five-speed manual transmission, 35,000 miles. All kinds of documentation. Original window sticker also comes with the truck. 22 with Pedro and the VIP 3 no Toyota top 10 list would be complete without some FJs, and we have several of them in this countdown from Las Vegas. In fact, number eight on the list is a 1984 FJ43, a little bit unusual, not an FJ40. Notice the canvas top on the back. Final price for this guy right here, $38,500. A 1984 Toyota Land Cruiser. This one's interesting, though. This was an FJ43. Well, beautifully restored back to pretty much the way it would have looked at the Toyota dealer. The only difference being the tires, but even the rims. These are 15 by 07 or so. No hot rod wheels here. Very pure. Frame off restoration three years ago. 4.2 liter, six cylinder engine, four speed manual transmission. These were not high revving engines, but they were torque monsters meant to pull you out of the bog or out of the sand or up the mountain or anywhere off road you needed to go. 
You know, yesterday we saw a number of FJ40s cross the block. This is an FJ43. It's a longer wheelbase version, and it gives the ability to do more things in the back, whether you simply want to haul more people or haul more stuff. But the FJ43, a longer wheelbase version. And you see the seats are longer than what we see in an FJ40. You could put four people back here instead of just two in a 40. Those seat bottoms fold up to increase storage capacity. Canvas top, removable. If you want to go al fresco, these are a lot of fun. Disc brakes up front, drums in the back, and yeah, those are factory discs. These were initially built with drum brakes, but right around 1974, the discs arrived up front for safer stopping. $35,000, the hammer come down, and 1984 J43 Land Cruiser to that gentleman right there. Moving on to the number seven position, we've got a tie. We move from that FJ43 to a pair of FJ45 pickup trucks. In this case, we have two of them, one from 1974. This one right here, a pickup truck that sold for $49,500. Tied with it was an FJ45 from a decade earlier, from 1964, that also sold for $49,500. Well, on number 641, 1974, Toyota Land Cruiser FJ45 pickup. Frame-off restoration included the chassis, the body, and the powertrain, powered by a 4230cc six-cylinder engine, mated to a four-speed manual transmission. Here's on number 641. Forty-seven thousand. 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 Forty-seven thousand.
We've seen FJ40s. We Earlier today, we saw an FJ43, which was the long wheelbase version of the FJ40. And, of course, this is the FJ45, which is the pickup version. We call these land bruisers because that's what they do. They go anywhere. Of course, if you get into the mud or the uh, water, you're going to go into four-wheel drive only after you step out and manually lock both front hubs. The uh, Quadra track system, which Jeep brought along in 1975 or 6, was not around in 1964. $45,000 for that 1964 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ45. Moving on to number six on our Toyota list from Las Vegas, we've seen an FJ43, a pair of FJ45s. It's time we finally get to an FJ40. We've seen a lot of these cross the auction block over the years, and this one was particularly beautiful. From 1980, an FJ40 that sold for $50,600 as the number six Toyota sale of the auction. The 1980 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40 up on the block now. Well, essentially a stock presentation, although it does have what they call an Old Man Emu suspension kit. Of course, Old Man Emu is one of the premier uh, suppliers of aftermarket parts. One of the things they will sell you is these, these red bushings for the leaf springs. That's polyurethane versus the rubber, which is stiffer and better at locating the axle. Less side sway with this versus rubber. I like the interior in this one, particularly that it's not just the buckets, but the back seats are in place. Now those back seat bottoms fold up and become vertical for more load space. When it has the stock inline six, no LS swap here, and that's okay. It's a pretty potent engine. The 4.2 liter inline six, or 3.6 in the case of this one here. Push rods, standard rocker arm type engine, nothing to fault. It's a great engine, why change it up? Hammer down, $46,000 for a very stock looking 1980 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40 with that old man Evo suspension. We're working our way through the top 10 Toyota sales from the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction in Las Vegas. That last FJ40 we saw was pretty stock. The next one, number five on the list, well, very custom. Check this out. It's a 1978 Land Cruiser FJ40, but this one has an LS3 engine under the hood. Final price for this guy right here, $68,200. The 1978 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40 Custom. Well, the inline six these are born with is not a bad engine, but this has something altogether different. LS3, 6.2 liters, 435 horsepower, but it's made it to the original Toyota H42 four-speed manual transmission by way of an adapter bell housing. Not that uncommon to do, a pretty tough transmission. Just don't go drag racing and try to power shift it, but it should live a long, happy life. Interestingly, it has an original FJ H42 four-speed manual transmission that's been rebuilt. It uses a hydraulic clutch going to a rebuilt transfer case. Interesting that that original FJ transmission can handle all that horsepower coming out of that Corvette engine. My thoughts exactly, Richard. <laughs> I like the wheels and tires on this. These look to be bead locks. There's a raft of, well, imitation bead locks. I don't think these are. And of course, the point of a bead lock, as any top fuel dragster or funny car driver will tell you, is to keep the rim and the tire together without slippage. Well, that also applies off-road when you air down. You get maybe eight or nine pounds and you're crawling over rocks. You can actually have the rim slip and pop the tire. Well, not with a bead lock. They stay glued together, well, until you unscrew them. Disc brakes up front, drums in the back, original Toyota axles front and rear, and usually when you put a V8 in anything, you've got to upgrade the axles. Not so much here. These are pretty rugged. That's about a nine-inch ring gear hiding behind that cover, and these are pretty rugged axles. It is kind of weird, though, to see the right-hand side with a very short axle shaft, the left-hand driver's side with a nearly twice as wide or long axle shaft. That's a function of where the transfer case is located on the FJ. Yeah, one of the other things they've done with this is they put in a Saginaw power steering package up front. So it's just going to be a little easier to manhandle as you're driving around. You've got plenty of horsepower, and it's easy to drive. $62,000 to the folks up in the skybox. Congratulations to them. 
Time for number four, and it is a Four Runner, a Toyota Four Runner. And while you and your friends may or may not have a Four Runner, at least you've ridden in them, you haven't been in one like this. Check this one out. It's a 2018, very modern, but massively customized. All kinds of changes have been done to this, and this one rocked the block. Remember, it's a Toyota, our number four sale of the auction, and it sold for $73,700. Center stage right now is this 2018 Toyota 4Runner TRD customized SUV. But what a world apart from the Land Cruisers, which we've seen here on the auction block so far. This is thoroughly modern. I like the color keyed two-tone paint, copper, and white. Very tasteful. Yeah, according to Consigner, this is the factory color Super White. Uh, this was actually originally going to be a SEMA bill, but for whatever reason, never quite made it to SEMA. But apparently the owner invested quite a bit. Check these out. I love these spikes on the end of the lugs. But it's a beautiful build, top and bottom. It's got a 270 horsepower engine under the hood. So we're not looking at anything spectacular there. But once again, it's a nice forerunner. Beautiful build on the outside. And, okay, we've seen a lot of custom Jeeps. When was the last time you saw something like this cross the block? Pretty uncommon. The engine is a very potent engine. Four-liter dual overhead cam V6. And, of course, that means there's uh, two camshafts per bank for a total of four. Four valves per chamber, which means you have a really incredible breathing capability out of an otherwise four-liter engine. Nice touches just about everywhere. You see the light kit up above. They've also got lights that have been installed in the wheel wells up in here. I can put my finger on it right there. So when you're driving along, you know, you got a little style. And if you want to go off road, well, you can easily do that as well. I mean, right now it doesn't have any scrapes or scrapes on it, you know, scratches. But I can see how this is built to be able to withstand just about anything. We're about two bids away of this breaking into the top 10 of the day. It'll take $70,000 to do that. They have adjusted the bid back to $65,000. Once again, I can see why. I mean, it's something different. I mean, we've seen a lot of Jeeps. We see a lot of FJs, all kinds of stuff. But it's unusual to see a Toyota 4Runner done up like this. $67,000 is the hammer price for that 4Runner. Up until now, as we've been going through the Toyota sales from the Barrett-Jackson Collector Car Auction in Las Vegas, we've been talking utility and off-road. But now it's time to turn to street performance. And there's one name in the Toyota world that always rises to the top. And our number three sale of the auction is a perfect example of that. In this case, it's a 1990 Toyota Mark III, but this one is very special. Essentially a brand new car. This Toyota had less than 200 miles on the odometer when it crossed the block. Final price, $74,800. Lot number 691.1, 1990 Toyota Supra. It's got the original 3.0 liter twin cam, 24 valve, six cylinder turbo engine featuring an oil cooler and electronic fuel injection. Five speed manual transmission with overdrive, 191 miles, title reads mileage exempt. Yeah, brand, brand new and a beautiful spec being the turbo and the manual. These were single turbo rather than twin turbo like the Mark IV Supra. But on the Mark IV Supra, to make more power, they actually go back to a single turbo that is really, really big. You probably wouldn't want to tune this one because it's so original. This one has the added sport package with electronic controlled suspension. $68,000 for that essentially brand new 1990 Toyota Supra. So the number three Toyota sale of the Las Vegas auction was a Supra. And of course, the number two is a Supra as well. In this case, we're going to move the clock forward just a little bit to 1997. That's where we're going to get this one. It's a 1997 Toyota Supra Turbo Anniversary Edition. It's got that killer 2JZ engine, bulletproof under the hood. That's what's bringing all the value to these cars. And once again, we're seeing the prices rise. This one, well, it sold for $88,000. Well, for a long time, we never saw anything like a Toyota Supra. And now, just about every auction, we see one or two rolling across the block. In this case, it's a 1997. It's a Turbo Anniversary Edition. As far as Supras go, this is stock form, the one to have. An Anniversary Edition manual twin turbo. This is kind of a bellwether, I think, for the Fast and Furious Supra we have coming up. Because if this one does well, I imagine the sky's the limit for the Fast and Furious car.
right. At the tail, we see two very influential items, the tail spoiler and the massive, almost three-inch diameter exhaust tip. A lot of sport compact Honda Civic owners saw those and said, I need that for my car. This is the car that launched those trends. So being a 15th anniversary edition, I wonder how much that will add to the hammer price here. Well, it's not the 15th anniversary of the Supra beginning. It was long before that, but the 15th anniversary of the twin turbo Supra. One feature I like inside of these is the driver's focus controls. You can see they pointed everything from the side in the climate control, the radio, towards the driver, the passenger. No input on the climate or the radio or anything else. Kind of like a cockpit. Tyler, this one has the six-speed manual. Was there an automatic version available? Oh, most certainly, but of course the manual is what people want. That's why I'm saying this is about the perfect spec of Supra. The color is fantastic as well. Having an unusual color, manual transmission, twin turbo, anniversary, doesn't get better than this. And it's rare to see one that hasn't been doctored in some way or another. I mean, people who own these cars generally want to be flashy and modify them. This one's bone stock. Yeah, it's got that 2JZ engine underneath that is pretty much bulletproof. And it just sold for $80,000 here at Barrett-Jackson in Las Vegas. All right, it's time for the number one Toyota sale of the Barrett-Jackson Las Vegas auction. And this car, oh, this is very special. Yes, it's a super like the two we've seen, but this one has an amazing story behind it because this was in not one, but two of the Fast and Furious movies. And when the bidding started, well, I'll tell you, that was Fast and Furious as well. The final price, $550,000. Well, that was a new record. Well, here we go. We have at least half a dozen phone bidders involved on this, the most anticipated car of this auction, the 1994 Toyota Supra Fast and Furious movie car. The Fast and the Furious, and Too Fast, Too Furious as well. It comes with extensive documentation. That documentation to come with the car includes a certificate of authenticity. The car was built by Eddie Paul. So this car was built for the 2001 movie and the 2003 movie by Eddie Paul at the Shark Shop in El Segundo, California, and then brought back for the sequel for its role as Slap Jack's Supra. Yeah, that color is Lamborghini Diablo candy orange paint. That style on the side. Troy Lee nuclear gladiator look to it. Man, this is big and bold and loud. Now they built several of these Supras for the film. This one is a very significant one. It was used in a lot of the stunts in the film, but under the hood, it's a pretty stock 2JZ. It's not the pretty car that they popped the hood to show off modifications. Also an automatic transmission, but a heavily used stunt car. This is a fourth generation Supra. These were built between 1993 and 2002. And while they didn't have a steel unibody, they were creeping in the use of lightweight metals, including an aluminum hood, which has been sliced a bit here for effect on the movie car. So they have added several phone operators to the phone banks here because of the interest in this car. Never seen so many people working the phone and the internet of Barrett Jackson on one car. And Craig Jackson was saying earlier, he has been getting just pummeled with people who want to know about this car. So as you mentioned, around the world, people are interested in buying this. Got to be 475. Now they got 475, you got to be 500. Way back when I was at Hot Rod Magazine, I did a how-to paint video with Eddie Paul, and he told me, he, he set a record in the Guinness Book of World Record. He actually rode a motorcycle from L.A. to Las Vegas doing a wheelie. Look it up. Eddie Paul actually did a wheelie from L.A. to Las Vegas on the rear tire only. Crazy. Now, the graphics down the side of this car, it's a man throwing a javelin or a robot, but uh, in the memes on the Internet, they call it the pull my finger man because he's sticking his finger out like you want to pull it. Half a million dollars of movie memorabilia that you can drive. Half a million dollars to a phone bidder. 
So that'll do it for our Toyota Top 10 Sales from the Barrett-Jackson Collector Car Auction in Las Vegas. Amazing collection of cars, once again, from utilities to sport performance. Just another example of the great cars you see crossing the block at Barrett-Jackson. If you like our Top 10 Series, all you have to do is go right over here. You can click that you like it, you can subscribe. Really, I want you to do it right now. Just go ahead. I'm waiting. I got all day. Click. Do it now. I'm Rick DeBrule. Thanks for joining us. Really, click. Do it now.